issue to the threshold or it takes much longer time. And this is the reason that we can uh, finally disturb the whole metabolism and, and no signal and no cell division. And finally, we can trigger the, the apoptosis. There was another experiment which partially can prove that, and Gabo Laske will uh, show another one. In that experiment, we, we made an acid load. So we brought down the pH in the cell uh, to about 3, P, uh, 3, and then we checked the amylase sensitive sodium hydrogen antiport, how can it work and how can it recover the pH in the cell. And as you see, the curve is different depending on the deconcentration. So we can suggest that somehow, for example, the sodium hydrogen antiport is sensitive for, for the deconcentration and, and that can modify the activity of that uh, transport system. I have shown you that uh, uh, in vitro growth, uh, the lower was the deconcentration, the bigger was the inhibitory effect. But the real question was whether we can uh, modify the expression of COX-2 gene. It is well known that the COX-2 gene has a key role in tumor development. It is responsible for, for enzyme which synthesize prostaglandin. And what we could see here, we could see a clear correlation between the deuterium concentration and the expression of COX-2 gene. And at the same time, we found correlation with the prostaglandin concentration and the deconcentration. The lower was the deconcentration, the lower was the uh, uh, concentra uh, lower was the deuterium concentration, the lower was the concentrated prostaglandin. And the question was whether this prostaglandin has any role in this inhibitory effect. So we made another experiment that we add back the prostaglandin from outside and we checked whether we can diminish the inhibitory effect of deuterium and we could do that because as we increased the prostaglandin concentration, simply disappeared the inhibitory effect of deuterium depleted water. So that could be one example uh, that the deuterium depleted water can intervene into that signal system and can modify the enzymes and, and gene expression which are closely related to, to cell growth. In another experiment, uh, we just checked the MAP kinase, which is labeled within two minutes when the cell got a signal. And you could see it didn't happen when we used deuterium depleted water, suggesting again we can modify this system. Later we went on and we, we chose the DNA chip containing, containing all the 30,000 human genes. And this is the results what we got. It was we've, what we found at the first side that a couple of hundred gene expression were changed uh, uh, in deuterium depleted water. So that, that answer was so complex that we decided not to go and not to continue mm -hmm. in that direction. We, we chose another DNA chip with only 500 different genes. These were kinases. And repeating several times and choosing the real good responding uh, genes, we finally could say that that seven genes uh, responded extremely well to deuterium depletion. There was an up regulation and there was a down regulation. Uh, Combining all these results and, and uh, all these the results of uh, the experiments, we could say that there is an extremely complex response to deuterium depletion, and I think there are a lot of work to, to do and to discover all the, all the background of this uh, process. So the conclusion, we say that the nature occurring deuterium may have a key role in cell cycle regulation. The changing DH ratio can be the signal to introduce uh, to, uh, to the induction of numerous cell process. The changing DH ratio can simultaneously modify the expression of genes and, and the activity of certain enzymes. We say that the results show that a hitherto unknown sun molecular regulatory systems may exist in the cell. And this deuterium hydrogen submolecular regulatory system can, can be a new target for, for anti cancer drug development. Okay, before I, I finish my talk, 
I would like to ask you to think about if we take only one animal cells, we can see how complex its structure. We know that within a, one human cells, there is a DNA with a 1.8 meter length. It contains 3 billion, 200 million, 100 uh, base pairs. And all this DNA, for example, is, is packaged in a small cell, which size is only uh, 30, 40 micrometer. We have discovered the metabolic pathways. It's extremely complex. The question is how the life can organize that, that extremely complex system. And I say that that should be the submolecular regulatory system. And I think if we can proceed, we can make a big leap. So used to we use the computer and with a huge piece of equipment, and it could make only a couple of uh, calculations, and that chip can do maybe thousand times, million times more than these big, uh, uh, very old computers. So I say that the life can organize that very, very sophisticated system because on a submolecular regulatory system, they can, can simultaneously organize the gene expression and proteins, and that way somehow they can harmonize all the process in the cell. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for, for your presentation. The paper is open now for discussions. Any questions or comments, please? Well, if there are no questions or comments later, there will be, I guess. We can proceed. Thank you okay. again. Thank you. And let me announce the next speaker. The next speaker will, will be me. And I will be talking about the physiological effects of heavy water.